Greetings, I am Herbert Erpeder, and today I'm going to build this 28mm scale plastic M3 half track made by Rubicon Models. The back of the box has an image of both the M3 and M3A1 versions that this kit can be used to build. There is also a paragraph about the history of this vehicle, and a paragraph about the model and its options, as well as an image of the included water slide decal sheet. Inside the box we find this upper hull piece. It was separated from the sprues with a piece of cardboard to prevent the hull from damaging the parts on the sprues. I really like the fact that this is a single piece. There's no way to get the hull sides misaligned with this unlike the Warlord version which is comprised of a number of pieces. The details on it are also pretty good. In addition to that, there are two sprues. The first of which contains things like the tracks, wheels, two crew figures, driver's compartment floor, and the frame of the half track. All the parts are neatly molded and free from errors. The mold lines, while present, are not excessive and will be easy to clean up. I really like that the parts on these sprues are clearly marked. The second sprue contains some stowage racks, a few more details, the interiors for the passenger compartment, and some machine guns. Also included is the usual awesome Rubicon instruction leaflet in which everything is clearly labelled and easily understood. And this sheet of decals. There is a good variety of markings here including the ambulance red cross markings and French markings. I quite like that there is a star split into sections for the front louvers too. Very good. Let's put this model together. I've decided to build the M3A1 version rather than the M3 version that can also be built. I start with the floor part for the driver's compartment. The instructions say to drill a hole here into which we can glue the middle seat, and so that's what I do. The middle seat fits nicely into the holes. The next step is to glue the front cab wall and instrument panel into place. This is pretty easy. The part more or less just slots nicely into place. Just to be sure, I test fit this assembly into the main hole part. Next I assemble the crew figures. The passenger doesn't require much assembly besides gluing his head into place. The driver has a set of arms that come with a steering wheel attached to them. The arms are quite simple to glue into place, though there might be a small gap. Then his head can be glued on and he's ready. Of course the crew is optional, and the half track can be assembled without them. The instructions would have you glue the crew into place now, but I'm going to leave them out until after they've been painted. This will make them much much easier to paint. I then turn my attention to the frame of the half track. I start by gluing these springy things into place. I'm not entirely sure what they are, but I assume they're part of the suspension system. This step is only for the M3A1 half track. If you're building the M3, you can simply leave this step out. I then glue the two halves of the track sets together. They go together quite easily. I was initially a little bit concerned about the flat spot that runs down the center of the tracks, but looking at pictures of the real thing, it does seem to be fairly accurate. The track sets can then be glued into place. It looks to me as though you could put them on either way, so be sure to place them correctly. The wheel with the teeth in it should be facing towards the front of the vehicle. Next we add the front wheels. These wheels have a nice little detail where they are slightly flat at the bottom in order to represent the vehicle having some weight to it. Very cool. After minor cleanup, the wheel can then be glued into place. As you can see, the axle and the hole for it are keyed so they will only go together one way. This is to ensure the flat part of the wheel ends up at the bottom with no messing around. I then glue the floor of the driver's compartment to the frame of the half track. This is simple. It sort of just sits in place right there on the front of the frame. Next I attach the outer hull part to the lower part of the half track. It kind of just slots together really easily. It's a great fit. There should be a small gap between the hull and the instrument panel. This is where the windscreen part will slot in. I really like this single piece hull design much better than the assembly of the bolt action hull sections which consisted of quite a few parts and was a little bit fiddly. Now to add the front of the engine compartment. For this we get a choice. This half track can be built with the armoured louvers open or closed. I really like this. It's a small detail, but the small things matter. The part can then be simply glued into place. As you can see, I have elected to use the version with the open louvers. Now onto the next choice we have to make. Deciding between this winch for the front of the half track or this roller. I chose the roller because I think it looks more interesting. I apply the glue to the slot in each side of the radiator grill part and then slip the roller part on. It is a pretty tight fit, and you might find it kind of tricky to get on initially, but once you do, it's just a matter of sliding the roller part as far upwards as it will go. It should end up looking something like this. Next, I prepare the seating for the passenger compartment. I need to drill out a hole for the machine gun ring support. That is the point marked F. The point marked G is for the M3 version, which has a light machine gun instead of the gun ring. I widen the hole a tiny bit, and then test fit the gun support ring pole. Test fitting parts is important. Next, instead of gluing the passenger seats into place, I add the windscreen part. The instructions seem to suggest adding this after the machine gun ring, but I don't think that will work very well. The part does slot nicely into place. Something cool that I wouldn't have thought about is adding windshield glass. 
The instructions provide a template for you to make this using some clear film or the plastic from a blister pack. It would make sense to not glue the clear part in until after the model is painted. Even though I'm not going to do this, I think it's a really good suggestion. The reason I'm not going to do it is because I'm going to model my half-track with the armoured windshield in the down position, and so that's how I glue that part into place. I then return my attentions to the passenger compartment. I glue the seat part into place. It almost drops right into place, only needing a slight nudge. It looks very neat. Next, I glue in the part with the backrest and what I'm assuming is a fuel tank. There is a second option for this part with what I assume is radio gear and some antennas. Then I glue in the gun ring support pole, making sure that the top part is facing the appropriate direction. The flat part should go against the ring. I then glue the ring part into place. I did find getting this positioned correctly to be a little bit fiddly, but not too hard. You can see I accidentally spilled glue on the front of the part. I try to wipe it off, but may have to try and pass that off as battle damage later. Next, I glue the support pole into place against the ring. I hold the ring down so there isn't a chance to nudge it out of place. I will attach the gun later. Next, I attach the rear door. I do like that this is a separate part, giving the option of modelling it open or closed. Next, I attach the stowage racks to the back of the half track. These racks are both slightly different in size. The wider one goes on the right hand side. Position it so that it sits nice and straight and doesn't obscure the door. The smaller rack obviously goes on the left. These are of course optional details. These racks are in the folded up position. Parts are included to model them in the down position and there are also a couple of boxes you can place in the racks. Awesome options. At this point I should have also attached the towing hook, but I forgot. Next, I attach the jerry cans to the side of the engine compartment. Make sure they are on straight. And then this box, which I assume is for tools. It goes on the right hand side footboard thing. Then I glue these mine racks to the side of the hull. Thanks to the person who commented on my video of the Warlord M3, letting me know that these racks were for holding mines. It's good to learn. These racks are a little more simple to attach than the Warlord version, which is nice. They should sit flush with the bottom edge of the passenger compartment, covering the rivets along that edge. Now for the 50 cal machine gun. Something I really like about this part is how it is attached to the sprue. Notice that the barrel of the guns don't connect to the sprue? This makes it really easy to clip from the sprue without breaking the part. Someone did some good designing here. I glue the ammo box onto the side of the gun and it's ready to be glued into the gun ring. And here's another nicely designed part of this model. This thing on the bottom of the gun connects with the gun ring, which means unlike say the Warlord version, which has a pin that goes into a hole in a specific place on the gun ring, this design allows you to position the gun anywhere in the gun ring, which I think is really cool. I glue the gun into place. While it is nice to be able to place it anywhere in the gun ring, it's probably not a great idea to position it in such a way that it will protrude beyond the side of the vehicle. The gun will get broken very, very easily. So that's it. One Rubicon 28mm scale plastic M3A1 half track completed. Let's compare it with the Warlord version. The Rubicon model is the darker one on the left, and the Warlord version obviously is lighter and on the right side. From the front they look fairly similar, though in my opinion the detailing on the Rubicon version looks a lot better and stands out more. The headlamps especially look much better than the Warlord version. The vision ports on the Rubicon model are also superior to Warlords, otherwise they do look very similar, which makes perfect sense. They both obviously have the appearance of an M3A1 half track and only really vary in detail slightly. Looking at the rear, we can see minor differences in the door handles and gun ring supports, and obviously the Rubicon version has optional stowage racks, but otherwise they look the same. A big plus of the Rubicon kit is that the hull is one part, so all the corners are perfect, not the case with the Warlord kit. From above we can see the dimensions of both vehicles are almost identical again only with minor differences in small details. I think both kits are quite good, and both make a great representation of this half track. In my opinion, both will look great when they're painted up, and on the gaming table I don't think their differences will be hugely obvious. That said, I do like the Rubicon kit slightly more. It was a tiny bit easier to build, and in my opinion has nicer detailing. I've really enjoyed building this kit. Rubicon have clearly put a lot of thought into this model. Not that they don't with their other kits, just simple things like how the machine guns are held onto the sprue impressed me. As well as other options for open and closed air vents and stowage racks. Of course, as always, I would appreciate more stowage options, but I wouldn't consider their absence an actual issue with this kit. It's not hard to find additional stowage parts for those that really, really want it. The instructions, as usual, are very good and clear. The parts did not require much cleanup at all, and they went together very easily. I forgot to time how long the build took, but it was rather quick, probably a little over half an hour in total. For anyone interested, this is the model I was talking about in last week's Ask a Herbert Herbert 
Reserve. I was using this model to carry a section of British infantry. I think this model is really quite good looking and it should look pretty great once I get some paint onto it. I won't be painting it soon, but when I do, I've come to the decision to paint both of my half-tracks to go with my British army. I'm kind of considering buying additional half-tracks, but I'm not sure if I will ever use more than two in an army anyway. I'm not any kind of expert on the game. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting or helpful. If so, I would appreciate it if you shared it with friends or others that might find it helpful too. Also, feel free to leave any suggestions, comments, complaints or anything of that nature in the comments section below on Facebook or Twitter. Also, click subscribe because that's always fun. As always, thanks for watching. Farewell.